Hello and welcome into the Knicksverse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here or you've been here before but have not subscribed yet, please do so, along with hitting that thumbs up button for me. We're very close to 8,000 subscribers, and I really want to thank everybody for joining. Uh, look, this was a, a tremendous day, tremendous day for the Knicks. They just won their sixth game in a row and against their nemesis, the team that ousted them from the playoffs last season in a tough six-game series uh, that could have gone seven games if things had gone a little bit differently in that final game. But uh, despite the awesomeness of this, uh, the Knicks won 125 to 109 uh, in a game where they did all the right things. They did the things that show that a team is becoming a very, very good team. I mean, I already went crazy before and called this like the most dangerous team in the NBA. And today kind of confirmed it because uh, the Heat did not want to lose this game. Now, the Knicks were playing at home at MSG, so uh, you got to factor that in. They had the, you know, the home cooking on their side, but uh, Miami was looking, looking to get, uh, to get this victory because they are now on a six-game losing streak. Uh, this was Jaime Hawkes' first game back, and uh, here, let's get into this part here. I have highlights for you, and uh, as you can see down below, Randall did get hurt, and I'm going to talk about that, the ramifications of it, uh, how the Knicks might respond, what it actually might mean. I'll get into that uh, in a minute, and I, and I do have the highlights for you. Uh, but Jaime Hawkes was out for six games, and the Heat went. They won the they won the first game that he was out, and then lost five. The rest, the next five, he made it a point to come back to play the Knicks, just like LeBron did. Just like I mean, it seems like all the guy, everyone wants to play against these Knicks. So uh, I wasn't surprised by that. And the Knicks took care of business. They handed them their sixth straight loss. Beautiful, but Randall did get hurt. He did get hurt. But before we get to the highlights, let me show you a few things here. Uh, Jalen Brunson put on a masterpiece performance today. He outcoached Eric Spolstra. That's right. Spo threw everything at him. The kitchen sink, double teaming, everything. Blitzing him, uh, weak side pressure, everything. Nothing was working. Nothing was working to the point where, I mean, and then OG <laughs> as well. Uh, there was a uh, who I think Tommy Beard tweeted out, OG broke Spo because he he drove from uh, the three point line and just I think he just dunked it and it was a total collapse uh, on the defense uh, Miami's end and Spo just lost he threw a fit called a timeout his face was already too sunburned and it just went totally red uh, it was it was a fun thing to see considering how much uh, how much pain Spo has inflicted on us over the years great coach best coach in the NBA by far. Uh, so it was nice to see that. I think uh, this is the kind of game that's going to make Miami, uh, it's going to help clarify what their approach is going to be in terms of the trade deadline. Same for the Knicks. And now, unfortunately, we had some different results from the Knicks. But before we get to that, I want to talk about something else that's happening that is of tremendous note that I don't think anyone's even talking about. But in the last two games, Quentin Grimes has closed games for the Knicks or been in there in crunch time in the fourth quarter. A guy who got removed from the starting rotation, who complained about his situation, who has been rumored in trades constantly. But when IQ and RJ were traded away for OG Ananobi, it was going to create more time for Grimes. However, we didn't see it at first. His actual minutes went down. So, but he, you know, he kept his head on his shoulders. He kept his priorities straight, uh, and he said all he cares about is just performing on, on the floor. He tries to block out all the trade rumors, and this is what's happened in the fourth quarter. Look at this. He's now averaging 10.5 points in the fourth quarter, the past two games. This is against Denver and Miami. You want me to repeat that? Those were the two final NBA final teams last season. Denver and Miami. He's shooting 88.8% uh, on nine attempts. He's hit eight of nine overall, and he's hit three of four in the fourth quarter from the three-point line, 75% in the last two games. He's getting hot in the fourth. Love to see it. Love to see his aggressiveness, and he's going to the basket more. Beautiful. Because if you think about that, so, uh, yeah, he is five of five inside the arc in the fourth quarter. Beautiful and his defense. I love when OG, Hart, 
and Grimes are out on the floor together. That unit is a defensive nightmare for opponents. So shout out to Quinton Grimes for keeping it together. I told you, I said to you guys when I did the Brogdon video, I analyzed uh, the options uh, for the Knicks and the uh, upcoming trade deadline. I thought it'd be great to go, just go for go for Brogdon, Malcolm Brogdon, because it'll just cost us Fournier and a pick. We don't need to put Grimes in that deal. Let's hold on to Grimes. He is a resource. He has a high ceiling. He, we haven't seen it. We've been, we as, as, as fans have been frustrated with him, but there's no denying his talent. And he is a two-way player. He, he's a great defender and he's a great three-point shooter. And now he's driving to the bucket. Love to see it. Let's keep that going. All right, now, before we get to the highlights, I do have to talk about this. So, late in the fourth quarter, the Knicks were already up 17, and uh, Randall drove to the basket, and as he drove, he had Brunson wide open on the left corner. He could have just sent it over there, but he saw Jaime Jaquez. Uh, he thought he could exploit that situation, and uh, he kind of spun into him, and Hawkes cut him, cut off his feet, and Randall landed oddly with his arm up. So we don't. This is what uh, Woj uh, tweeted out. Uh, first, he tweeted out: New York Knicks forward Julius Randall has suffered a dislocated right shoulder. Source tells ESPN. Then he uh, followed that up with: the X-ray didn't show much damage. Source said an MRI is coming later tonight. Not much damage. Well, it doesn't seem like he may have broken his clavicle. Let's hope, but uh, at the same time, not what is not much, what not much damage. So, uh, shout out to Nick's Muse who tweeted this out. I didn't it wasn't I didn't have enough time to put this in here, but he tweeted out that Steph Curry suffered a left shoulder dislocation on December fourteenth last season. He returned to action on January tenth, only missing eleven games, and then. Uh, Jeff Stotts, and a shout out to JD for sending me this uh, tweet. Uh, Jeff Stotts is at In Street Clothes, uh, referencing Julius Randle. The primary concern after a shoulder dislocation is the associated soft tissue damage, like lim uh, ligaments, the labrium, etc., which will ultimately dictate treatment options. Average time lost for in season nondescript shoulder dislocations is 31 days which is averages to 11.7 games. So, Steph missed 11 games. This guy's predicting between 11 and 12 games you miss. However, because of the scheduling gods at the NBA, actually butts up against the All-Star break. So, Randall may not miss. There's only nine games from, from today for the Knicks, from today till the All-Star break. So, nine games, and then there's a whole week where Randall gets an extra, which could easily be another th two, three games or four games sometimes could have been played in that period. So he'll probably be ready to go by February 22nd. And that puts us at about 30 days-ish. 30 days-ish. And also Randall's strong. You know, he's a big guy. You know, he's, he, he bounces back from uh, injuries quicker than most people. Uh, so let's see. It's, this is going to be, this. it's devastating to miss him. There's no doubt. But uh, there is a silver lining. Uh, this could give him some extra rest, you know. Uh, and uh, there's, that never hurts to get a little extra rest. But, of course, the shoulder, we'll see. We'll see. The MRI will come out tonight, uh, the news of it. Uh, they're probably doing it right now. So uh, maybe it'll even happen while I'm talking. Uh, so we'll see. So, yeah. So we're talking about Charlotte, Utah, Indiana, Lakers, Grizzlies, Dallas, Indiana again, Houston, Orlando, Sixers. No, not Sixers. Orlando is the last. It's uh, Valentine's Day is the last game before the All Star break. So, fingers crossed. It's not the worst news. It's fingers crossed. It's bad uh, because we like we were kind of suffering a little bit in terms of uh, a replacement for Randall in that second unit, but it's been filled in by playing OG with that unit. Uh, Achua has been really a positive influence. Uh, and then there's Josh Hart, who is one of those little guys who play like a big. I could see in the starting lineup, uh, probably against Charlotte, I could see Hart actually taking Randall's spot in the lineup, but it'll be OG who slides to the four. And if you watch this game, you saw OG's got some moves. There is some untapped 
offensive potential in that man that can now be exploited, drawn out further during this period. And then we may end up with a more impactful offensive player from OG Anunoby at the end of this injury when Randall comes back. So there are some silver linings in the situation. It's not the end of the world. So let's keep focus on that. Now let's get to the highlights. Here we go. The Knicks uh, started off slow in that first quarter, uh, but they were covered beautifully to uh, end up. Uh, I think did we end up. Uh, yeah. Oh, we were down three by the end of the, four, uh, the first quarter. But at one point we were down, I think, 10. And, uh, you know, uh, Jalen Brunson struggled a bit in that uh, first quarter. He was only two of five, seven points, uh, hit one of two from the three-point line. Uh, but, man, the Knicks shot that three-point shot beautifully today. They shot, they shot overall for the game 51.5%, but in that first quarter, they shot, they hit four of seven, 57.1%, and that really is what kept the, uh, got them back in the game. Uh, the, uh, the, the Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler put on a little show in that first quarter with 11 points, four of seven for him. Uh, Jaime Jaquez, always, uh, I, I always just love watching him play. He didn't do much uh, offensively in that first quarter. He came through more in the second quarter. Uh, but look at that drive here. Look at that. That's where Josh Hart is just brilliant. That right there, that move. I love the way he finishes. He picks up the foul. I don't know if he finished the end one there, but uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. As you can see, the Knicks uh, got back in this game. And uh, right here, we got a little deuce action. Deuce from the three-point line is just also becoming automatic. Uh, he had his one three-pointer in the, the, the third quarter. His pressure's a chua. He... Finished, uh, he got four rebounds in that first quarter. It's beautiful. Look at that. So there you go. That was the beginning of the third. And then the Knicks uh, had a nice response in that second quarter. They held the Heat to just 21 points. Just 21 points. They uh, shot three of 11 from the three-point line. And the Knicks lit them up for 34 in that second quarter. They got uh, five from OG. They got five from Randall. They got seven from Brunson. They got eight from Dante DiVincenzo, who th hit all three of his uh, field goal attempts. They got uh, even, you know, pressures got in. Everyone who, everyone who played in the second quarter scored, except for Isaiah Hartenstein, who did look a little bit, uh, like, you know, rusty, a little bit slow. But I think he might be just uh, has that Achilles in his head right now. Remember, it a lot of it that that injury that he had. This was his first game back from uh, his Achilles uh, uh, tendinopathy. I think that's how you say it, uh, which is basically from uh, overuse. So uh, I think it was in his head a bit. He did come out, I think, in the second half and try to be a little more, inflict his uh, will on the game a little bit more. Uh, but this wasn't really his night, and I, I wouldn't expect it uh, to be from him for coming back from injury. Uh, yeah, everybody scored in that. That was a great one. Great one. And uh, Quentin Grimes did not hit a bucket in the second quarter, but he went three for four at the free throw line. But he finished so strong in that fourth quarter. So by the end of this, uh, oh, yeah, so the, the Heat made a nice little run towards the end of the, uh, the second half, or the first half. But uh, the Knicks uh, held him back and took a 10-point lead. 10-point lead into the second half. Sorry, had to cough there. Uh, Bam, Bam was almost a non-presence for uh, Miami Heat. He did finish with six points in that uh, first half, but uh, three of four, eight rebounds. The Knicks did a great job of kind of neutralizing him. It really was all about uh, Jimmy Butler and Duncan Robinson. You know, he put up some points. He had a decent game, a decent first half for himself. But as you, oh, here, this is the beginning of the third quarter now. Look at OG here. Got stripped. And then, uh, oh, yeah, that one kind of hurt. The uh, Heat made a nice run in that third quarter to close uh, up 35-28. So they were a plus seven in that third quarter, and the deficit was only three for the Knicks uh, beginning the fourth quarter because Julius Randle hit a monster three-point shot at the end of that uh, quarter. It would really give us a lift because they had tied the game. I think it was 86 all or something, and you started kind of had a little gulp, you know, like, oh, no, 
Is this where the Heat are going to come and like put the punishing and our, our little run here? But no, not at all. The Knicks were tough. The Knicks have become, there's a toughness about the team now and an efficiency about the team that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, nice little blow by by Butler there. And Deuce is like looking at it, like, what happened? So, yeah, see, this is where Miami Heat came. They didn't, yeah, see that? They tied it, 86 all. And he got the end one, but missed it. And then here is the end of the third quarter. Boom, Randall. Nice. Randall had a nice uh, game in terms of uh, his three point shooting. Uh, he shot uh, three of four from the three-point line, 75%, hit all four of his uh, free throw attempts. Uh, he was just one rebound shy of a triple-double. Uh, he only played about a minute or so in that fourth quarter because uh, he got hurt. Also, but he also was on the bench for a long stretch of that fourth quarter during the, like, the first half of it. I think he came in around the six-minute mark or so. Uh, but the Knicks had such well-rounded scoring. They had six guys in double figures. Uh, Brunson with 32, OG with 19, Randall with 19, Precious, uh, I mean, uh, Josh Hart with 14, Grimes 12, and Dante DiVincenzo with 11. And the team shot seven, they connected on 17 of 33 three point attempts. It's 51.5%. You're not going to find many teams that can lose when they shoot that well from the three point line. Uh, but the free throw line was a, was an interesting uh, adventure. Grimes missed four free throw attempts, uh, and uh, OG missed two. So the Knicks finished uh, under 70% from the free throw line on 26 attempts. They hit 18 of 26. But the rebounding, we destroyed them. 46 to 38 in the rebounding. Uh, the assists, Knicks were, a little, were too shy of the magic number of 27, but 25 is a decent number. Uh, the Heat ended up with 26. Uh that hardly any turnovers in this game. There were 15 turnovers total between both teams. Eight for Miami, seven for the Knicks. And Miami, I think, only had one turnover in that first half. And the Knicks only had two. So this was a very well-controlled game in terms of that. It was not a sloppy game. wasn't a choppy game because we've seen some of those. Look at that nice drive by Hart. I love when he finishes that. He even did a step back three, and he connected in this game. Josh Hart. To finish with 14 points, 5 of 7 overall, uh, 2 of 3 from the 3-point line, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists for Josh Hart. Great all-around game. Might be one of his best games uh, that I've seen uh, recently from him. Oh, all right, we're back to the beginning. Let's get back to this. Here we go. So, uh, I rattled off a lot of the stats, but here you can actually see them visually for yourself. Uh, six uh, Knicks in uh, double figures. You can see Isaiah Hartenstein only played 16 minutes, uh, two of two. Does, that was all in the second half. Uh, six rebounds for him. Hopefully, uh, it'll take him a little time. Hopefully, he'll get back in the groove quickly and uh, soon. And uh, every time I say quickly, I always think of my, our guy. Uh, soon. And that way, because uh, we're going to need all bodies. I mean, we got to make up for Randall. Randall not playing, m missing nine games, ten games, maybe even – Maybe they does hold to the 11 games. We don't know. We don't know the severity of the injury yet, but uh, however much he misses, we are going to miss him dearly, dearly. Uh, look at Precious Achua, 10 rebounds for him, uh, four points. He did struggle around the basket finishing. There were several. There were two series of plays with Deuce, a pick and roll with Deuce, and Deuce delivered the pass perfectly to, to, to Achua, couldn't finish on the left side of the block uh, of the hoop. And then they tried it again on the right side. He couldn't finish either. So that was kind of frustrating. And almost even, I even think he had some, I think that's part of his offensive rebounds. He had three offensive rebounds uh, himself. Randall had three offensive rebounds as well. The Knicks had 11 overall. Yeah, 11 overall offensive rebounds. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, the plus minus, as you can see, Josh Hart, a plus 30 monster monster game for him this is the kind of obviously you know josh hart is not going to shoot 71 for percent you know every game but that the type of effort the type of efficiency that he uh, used today is what we'd like to see from now on sometimes he has a little he's sometimes he's actually responsible for the choppiness in games because he'll pass up uh three-point shots he'll pass up open looks he'll 
jump up in the air and like try to find somebody and just throw the ball out of bounds or too hard and just it, it turns into a turnover. This he was so much more controlled today. I only committed one turnover in his 32 minutes. Randall finished with four turnovers in his 32 minutes. So between uh, just if you take out Randall, <laughs> the rest of the team only committed three total turnovers. And one of them was by, by Ryan Ar Archie, Archie uh, Diacono, and that was in garbage time. So the Knicks were very, very well controlled and efficient in those uh, in the turnovers department. Uh, let's see here, Miami. Yeah, you can see Butler finished with twenty-eight. Uh, Bam, a very non-impactful twelve, but I did have a double-double, twelve and thirteen. Uh, Eighteen points for Tyler Hero. Again, he also didn't really make an impact uh, on, on this game. Uh, Duncan Robinson, uh, 19 points for him, 5 of 11 from the three-point line, 4 of 11 for Tyler Hero. So they combined for 9 of 22. That's that's very good. But the rest of the team really, they don't really, they're not a good three-point shooting team. So they're going to suffer. They're going to struggle. They're going to struggle. If if Butler is not hitting it from the three-point line or like Jaime Hawkins, he only put up two attempts. If he's not hitting it, this, this team is going to struggle. But look at Kevin Love, who usually kills us. Only two points for him, 14 rebounds. I mean, uh, uh, 14 minutes for him, just two rebounds. Here are the team uh, comparisons. Uh, the Knicks shot 51.7% overall, 51.5% from the three-point line, but a terrible 69.2% from the free-throw line. Uh, we were uh, plus eight in rebounds. Uh, assists, uh, we were minus one, but very pretty even. All, even in steals, six steals for us, six steals for them. Uh Five blocks for them, three just three for us. Uh, the turnovers I talked about already. The fast break points, that's one thing. That's what. That's how the, the Heat were able to stay in this game because they weren't connecting from the three-point line that well for, for a stretch there. Uh, but they, they were plus 18 in fast break points over us, 28 to 10. Uh, points in the paint, almost even. We won that by two. And uh, then you can see we were once down by 10 and up by 22. Nice little 32-point swing there. That is the mark of a very good team. This is developing into like the kind of teams, like I mentioned earlier in the previous recap, like in the 90s, where the Knicks just came and teams thought they had a chance. And then suddenly that fourth quarter, they would choke the life out of them. And that's what Jalen Brunson does. It suffocates them because they try to do everything they can to stop him. And they're just unable to do it. And it's got to be so frustrating and demoralizing. <laughs> yes, I love that. All right, I wish, I wish uh, the news had popped out. Let me just check this before I sign off uh, to see if any new news came. Nothing. Nothing. Well, fingers crossed. Let's hope for the best. Uh, as I mentioned, he there's a possibility he may only miss a total of nine games. Uh, because of the all-star break, uh, providing us, giving him that extra time to rest. But you know him, whenever he comes back from uh, a, an, uh, an extended layoff of any kind, even a, the all-star game, he's he, he's not quite in the groove. It takes him a game or two. So it's almost like we won't have him for like at least 11 games or so. Uh, but uh, it's not the worst time. If this had happened, you know, the last week of the season, we this would be devastating. Uh, and injuries is just a reality of this game, an unfortunate reality of this game, and it hurts, hits everybody. Uh, should, uh, you know, with a 17-point lead, should he be attempting plays like that? Probably not. Uh, but one thing I got to say about his game and his approach uh, as of late, I am loving that he is, he's, he has stopped exhausting a possession to try and get his bucket. He used to exhaust it. That was the dribble, 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 and the spinning into traffic. You know, his back to the basket too much. I like him with his uh, facing the basket. And obviously when he's on the move, to get him the ball when he's on the move, he's just a nightmare for a defense. And then when he spins, it's like he has momentum. It's hard to come in and strip the ball from him when he's spinning. But when he's, when he's spinning on the move, off the dribble, but when he's set and he's dribbling and wants to spin, that's when he gets the uh, the ball stolen from him or stripped from him. But if he's in motion he, and he's so fiercely strong, it becomes really difficult. And the beauty is he's seen the he sees the court better because he doesn't have great court instincts in terms of awareness of where his teammates are. He's not one of those guys like you know Jokic who can do a behind the back pass or whatever you know 
no look passes. He's not that kind of guy. So he needs to see what he's out there. So when he faces the basket, he's he's much more efficient that way, which is why which is why the Knicks have gotten become such a more lethal team. Because now guys are getting the ball with enough time to get the shot off. Here's the thing. It, it's just literally, we're talking about like half seconds here, half seconds to a second. If Randall has the ball and he's on the block and he's dribbling, 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 trying to make a move, 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 and he gets double teamed, and even then the third defender comes off the wing to strip the ball. So someone's going to be open, right? But the more he dribbles, the more he dribbles, it gives the other two defenders or three defenders time to adjust their positioning on the court. So the guy in the corner, the Nick player in the corner who was open, you know, a second and a half ago, now is not. The guy on the wing now is not. So then even if he like flings the pass over to him, there's not enough time for them to get off a good clean look. But that's what he's changing. Now he's delivering the passes when the guy is open. Beautiful, beautiful. And where the defense isn't set. They haven't seen what's, 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 what's happening. Love that. Okay, thank you so much for watching this. Again, my name is George. Please follow me on Twitter. Follow this channel. Subscribe. Uh, share it. I would appreciate that tremendously. Drop your comments. I want to hear your thoughts and feelings. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be some news popping up. Uh, who knows? I may jump out and uh, do another video if it's the news, depending on the gravity of the news. Uh, would a trade be an option? Let's say uh, Randall's set to miss uh, two months or so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the Knicks should look at a trade. You know, a guy like a Jeremy Grant, you know, could be an interesting person just to come in and, uh, you know, basically eat up some minutes, uh, provide some offense. Uh, and uh, he can also then slide to the second unit when uh, Randall returns. Uh, he could be an interesting interesting uh, player to, to bring to this team. Uh, I'll come up with some other options. He's just a guy that comes off the top of my head right away because I know uh, Portland is uh, struggling and they're probably looking to get anything for uh, anything for uh, for him. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. But let's hope for the best. All right. I'll see you around the next bird.